from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. And welcome back to the Sands, everyone. John Wall is here along with Keith Townsend, and we are at Dell Technologies World, day one of three days of coverage here on theCUBE. Keith, good to see you, sir. It's been a while, it huh? It has been, about six months. Where have we been? And you've got that going on? You look so distinguished and professorial. You know say. what, I'm trying to make up for the lack of hair on the <laughs> head, so I appreciate that you know. Well, it looks good, looks good. We have two guests with us talking today about Extreme IO. We have uh, Shana Maimondo, who is a vice president, or rather, director of marketing. At, I gave you a promotion. You get a promotion. Yeah. 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 That's, that's Can I get one too? Go to, go to <laughs> director of VP, <laughs> just like that, uh, at Dell, and uh, Candy O'Mara, a solutions architect at VMware. I'm sorry, no promotion, Candy. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the way it goes. Uh, so, Sean and I, if you would, before we get started, or jump in, let's talk about Extreme IO a little bit. Tell the viewers at home a little bit about the product, and then we'll get into VMware's use of it and how that's, uh, how that's taking shape. Sure. So, Extreme IO is the purpose built, market, le market leading all flash array. It's built on unique content aware, metadata centric multi-controller architecture coupled with intelligent software that helps us deliver very high performance, ranging from hundreds of thousands to millions of IOPS with consistently low sub-millisecond latency, irrespective of what the system load is, how much data has been written to the array, or whatever the workload characteristics are. Now, this metadata-centric architecture lends itself to a lot of other benefits. For example, we do inline all the time data reduction on the data path, and that leads to not only very high storage efficiencies, but also, since we do not write anything that's not unique down to the SSDs, it gives much more longevity to the SSDs themselves, driving down costs. Third thing is, it's pretty simple to use. Candy probably is going and, and to probably get from it. a customer perspective, right? I mean, yes. That's the, that's the huge value. Yes, it's pretty simple to uh, deploy. We have an intelligent HTML5 based UI that's consumer grade, easy to use, at the same time providing uh, all the enterprise functionalities that you will expect. The fourth thing I'd mention is integrated copy data management. So because this is a extremely high performance all flash array, it is expected to do great in well TP environments, virtualized environments, but on top of it, the way it is uh, architected because of this always in memory metadata architecture, the copies are literally as good as production volumes, so it's not just for protection, you can actually use the copies to run workloads on them, and you get the same performance, same inline all the time data services on the production, on the copies, and you cannot really like, figure out any difference between production volume and a copy volume, so that leads into a lot of uh, business benefits in terms of consolidating various copies, okay, and changing the application workflows. So Shandamai, we'll dig into that in a second with the uh, inline DD, inline DD with copy data management. But first, let's bring it up higher in the stack. Candy, amazing performance numbers out of Extreme IO, but the all flash market is an extremely crowded market. The, for, in, for the average use, end user, as you engage customers and you come to them, you know, VMware runs, VMware or Dell Technologies, Michael Dell like to say, Dell Technologies runs best on Dell Technologies. How do you help customers, even when you look at the Dell Technologies portfolio, when you have all flash vSAN, you have uh, Isilon, you have Isilon with flash, you have all these solutions, how do you help them navigate the broad portfolio, and then come to a, uh, the, give us some typical use cases for an extreme I.O. Right, so in our, for our instance, is what we have, the first um, implementation of extreme I.O. we have done was with SAP HANA. 
Mm. Now that's an in-flash memory database. So right. everything's in flash. You need a really fast back-end storage array. So Extreme IO all flash with the seven millisecond latency is a perfect fit. You know, you, if, if your database is all in memory, you can't have a slow storage behind it. You can't, you'll lose the performance, right? Your, your database will become degraded. So that was our reason for going that direction was because of the all-in-flash memory of SAP so, HANA. Now the rest of those our infrastructures actually have good use cases for other things, but in this case, for us, it was Extreme IO. So let's focus in on that SAP HANA use case. So SAP, in-memory database, a lot of SIs will tell you, you know what, the storage layer just needs to be fast. Doesn't have to be Extreme IO fast. What did you guys find, what was the specific advantages in the SAP HANA that brought you down the Extreme IO? I mean, the writes are done in memory, so. Well, no, actually the writes actually go to the disk. It is in memory, but it still has to write to disk and get the response right, back. Really especially the writes, right? And like, especially on SAP HANA, yeah. it has very specific requirements in terms of when you're loading up the database, yes. it needs to load up in a right. very specific like it's like a tenth of a it's period, tenth of a second and like that you, you can still have a need deletancy. an all flash array for SAP HANA, even though it is an in-memory database. Right, that's where the misconception is. People are like, oh, we can put on slower storage. It's like, no, you actually need the storage to be able to to respond back to the database as quick as it does. The minimum requirement, I mean, the maximum latency is like a tenth of a second. I mean, it's really it's really low, but it's seven milliseconds, so we have no latency. I mean, we are actually getting the throughput and the performance. And there's other benefits with it as well. I mean, the dedupe all all in, you know, um, always on the reduction. That's huge. That's a big factor. When you don't have to have multiple copies sitting on your array, that saves you a lot of So, uh, like Keith was saying, you know, crowded market, a lot of options, a lot of choices. Sure. What, what was it for you then, specifically, you said, okay, this is, this is our product, this is what we want to dance with, so to speak, because, again, you've got a lot of options. It was, it was the, the, the response that was needed for performance, and it was all flash, we were making a decision, on where we wanted to run SAP HANA. We did not have it implemented anywhere else. And we we're like, we have existing infrastructure and we we're moving to a new, um, new data center and we had to make a decision which, where we wanted to go. And Extreme IO fit the bill. It met many of our different requirements. One of them was performance. The second one was the total low cost of ownership, right? And then the SNAP, the SNAP technology, that was huge. So let's talk a little bit more about that SNAP technology. I've uh, spent a lot of time as an SAP infrastructure architect, and one of the most painful parts of SAP operations is being able to refresh, dev, QA, M plus one, the lower environments from production. What advantages have, your, have you and your customers seen using SNAP management with Extreme IO? So let me kind of like give you the broader view and then like you can uh, talk about sure. the, the very specific instances that you have seen, right? Uh, so, uh, Extreme IO's snapshot technology, we call it Extreme IO virtual copies. They are based, again, like based on the in-memory metadata. And Extreme IO doesn't write anything on the SSDs unless it's unique across the entire cluster. Snapshots, by definition, is a copy. Till like you mount it and make it like writable. So for us, when you take a snapshot, it's an extremely fast operation because all we are doing is updating the metadata in memory, and then, uh, like, if you are keeping it as a protection copy, say for example, like as a read-only, like just to recover from a disaster, then that's one purpose. But then the other purpose is uh, use them as writable snapshot where you can run uh, like your test dev, uh, I mean, copy for backup, all those things. Now, why can we do this thing? The reason is, uh, all these copies, they're not consuming any extra space till like you are writing something unique uh, to it as a test of copy, right? So now, you have the capability of consolidating like lots of copies. For example, in our tradition, I mean, our customer base, for every database, there is literally like five to eight copies. So, uh, I mean, 60% of the storage that gets consumed is essentially on copies. Now, if you can consolidate all those copies into the single array without consuming any extra capacity, 
at the same time delivering that very high performance not only for your production environment but also for your test dev, QA, sandboxing. That gives the customer a lot of values, not only in terms of like infrastructure dollars, but also transforming the application workflows, improving the productivity of the developers and the, the, the storage admin, VM admin in general. So that's what we kind of like see across the board from our various customers. No, like what's your experience? <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, actually what we do is, we're, we're a little different. We actually use the writable performance snapshots. We use them at our DR site. And what we'll do there is we'll mount those into a test bubble and it is mm. having our production environment, instead of needing a separate dev environment, we can mount basically in a little isolated bubble those writable snapshots or copies and test anything we want in our true little production environment, right? And then toss it away when we're done. So we can test out a new release or we can do something different with the database or an application. And then when we're done, toss it away. That way we don't need so many different environments built out. So it's a savings there. Um, we, don't, we, don't necessarily, we don't make the local copies, what you guys were talking about for stage and dev. Those are already built out. But we do put those on the same array now used to be you'd have production on one array and stage on a different, right? But now, because they're similar and you want the dedupe and the compression benefits, you want them on the same array. Because then you, that's where you gain that, you know? So the, 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 the snapshots we do at the target, we play with those, the writable, it's performance ready. I mean, it, it's the same performance as if you were on the source, which is what, what which is the big game changer there for us. And I think it's really, from a technical perspective, it's really important to know why Extreme IO is so much better at snapshot management. One of the things that uh, vendors will warn us is that snapshots degrade performance over a period of time. So therefore, the fact that you guys have a dedicated uh, metadata subsystem helps improve overall performance. But I'd like to talk about your use case for uh, extending uh, to your DR site. So from DR to DR, what do you guys use to replicate data from one extreme IO to uh, your DR? Right now, we for us right now with SAP HANA, we're using RecoverPoint with Extreme IO snapshots, which is fabulous because once the two sync up, the first initial sync, at that point, Recover Point literally just goes out and gets a snap diff, and that's all the data it's transferring over. So it lowers your requirements of your WAN, your know, bandwidth requirements are lower, so that, that, that's what we're using today. It's, it's a great tool for us. And that way, we can mount it at the target site. You know, so. And then just briefly, we, we've got, we're about out of time, as Shannon, if you would. Going forward, I mean, let's talk about you know wh where you are in terms of development. You know what what you see as maybe the next critical phase for Extreme IO. So, in fact, uh, here in Dell Technologies world, we are announcing availability of our uh, native replication technology. Uh, Candy mentioned she is can... using uh, Extreme IO with Recover Point. That's a great solution. Now we are going to have the native replication technology and what's different from other solutions that are out there is this replication is also metadata aware and as a result, it's, it's not only sending only the unique data over the web, but also uh, it's globally D2 and compressed. And suppose on your target site, you already have a data block that might be unique for your primary site and hence the primary says like, hey, I need to send over this data to you and our protocol is going to say like, yep, I have this metadata, I already have it, so send me the metadata pointer to it and we are all done. We don't even need to send the unique block that was in the primary site if it happens to stay or happens to exist on the secondary site. Netting it out, as a result, uh, we see great reduction in the WAN bandwidth that's good, going to be used, and the total capacity that you will need between primary and secondary, so that will also be reduced. In fact, like our numbers that we are going to say, like you can get like 38% like less storage capacity-wise, and WAN bandwidth could be reduced like as high as like say 75 to 80%, 80%, 80%, 
are based on like the traditional mechanisms. So we actually did a test on this to see the performance between replicating a database using recover point on Extreme IO with snapshots, and then we also did it with Extreme IO native replication, and it was eight times faster. Uh, so it was eight times faster. Business value replicating is, uh, the same amount of data. Recovery point object of so less data loss in case of emergency, just a higher level of service to the business. Right. Yeah. Nothing so like recovery. a happy customer, right? Yeah. No, I, I, I actually <laughs> love this product. I would not be talking about it. I, I really tell. like Extreme IO. Uh, and I've been doing this for a while. Yeah, well, Candy and Shannon, well, thanks for being with us. We appreciate the time. Thank Sorry you. about the promotion. <laughs> Hate to take it back from you. <laughs> Nikki Bird did that. All right, good deal. Thanks Great. for joining us. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank right. you. Thank you. Back with more from Dell Technologies World here in Las Vegas. You're watching theCUBE back in just a bit.